Maybe Airbon is like that. Or Airborne. I keep I always thought it was called Airbon. I don't know why I, I called it Airbon my entire life. I didn't know it was Airborne. You forgot the N. I swear I thought it was Airbon, dude. Like I'm I'm having a Mandela effect right now where you guys are wrong. It was Airbon. It's Berenstain <laughs> Bears, man. Trust me. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. Hey. I'm not going to respond to that anymore <laughs> when he's bobbing your head. What? I'm just moving my head, bro, to the beat. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. I have the natural cadence every time, and I, I do it the same every time. I don't know why. Anyway, we also have uh, a man who is sick and tired of all these sick guys. It's Chinoda. Hey, hey. And let's be honest, Chinoda, you're not sick and tired of this. You like this shit as much as John does. I think about <gasps> every day. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't say that. Part. We're demonetized now, bro. What the hell? Oh, fuck. Yeah, you're right. Open it. Uh, you no, think no, about no. unaliving John, yourself. <laughs> this went to a very dark place very quickly. <laughs> Mm. Not even thirty seconds in, and we're you know, man, we're demonetized. It's great. <laughs> yeah, we're we're screwed now, boys. We're screwed. Sorry, but, guys. Uh, so we're at the, nearly the very end of the year. In fact, this will be the next to last episode of the podcast that goes out in twenty twenty three. That means it is time for us to do our preview of winter twenty twenty four, and that is what we are here to do today. Before we get into it, though, I do want to remind two things. I want to remind you if you like what you see and want to see more. Uh, please like comment subscribe down below um, it really helps us out um, and the second thing I wanted to ask you guys a question before we got started looking forward to the winter 2024 anime and that is um, since this is you know going to go out near the end of the year um, what do you guys think of anime in 2023 was it a good year for anime a bad year depends when did Chainsaw Overall. Man come out 2022 <laughs> it was fall 2022 right yeah Okay, 2023 was kind of mid. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I like how this is our new measuring stick for how good anime is. is Chainsaw Man. Was it as good as Chainsaw Man? No, fuck it. Uh, to be I, honest, in 2023, I would say I had a lot of anime I, I thought were great. It wasn't terrible, like the previous years. Like, <laughs> well, that's kind of unfair, right? Like 2019, 2020, and 2021 are kind of like the off years because it's like you know the, there was a Something going on in the world. <laughs> there was an external factor. So, but I don't know if it's because I've revitalized my love for watching anime, but I'm watching more shows than ever. I'm watching a lot of shows I don't read, which is crazy. Which is going to be different from this season, because instead of only having three things that I read um, coming out, I have like 12 shows that I have I am reading or I have read that are coming out. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> Is it is it is it odd for you watching an anime and not knowing what's going to happen? Uh, I, honestly, I find it refreshing when I watch <laughs> something and I don't because it's it's hard. I'm going to get into this when I talk about um one of my things one the the first thing I'm going to talk about. But it's it's hard to enjoy a anime when I really like the source material, mm. right? Like for Chainsaw Man quite literally right before the anime came out is when I, I binged all of it because I was like, okay, fine. Everyone keeps talking about Chainsaw Man. I'll read the manga. And I was like, yeah, it's whatever. And then it gets really freaking good. And you're like, yo, what the heck? Right. And I, I try to temper my expectations because it's whenever you translate a source material to a, a new medium, like a movie, for example, or an, a show a series, it is never as good as the source material. It is very rare that it is better. Right. Yeah. Or as good or better. It is extremely yeah. rare, I would say. You um, and I have talked about it before. If a, if an adaptation is as good as its source material, that's a good adaptation. If it's better than its source material, that's a great adaptation. Yeah, because it's hard to... Well, going into American movies, like um, I remember The Shining uh, mm. with Stanley Kubrick. I loved that version, but I believe Stephen King hated it, right? Yes, it was like it was a god awful adaptation. Really? It's not faithful. Yeah, so much so that he have, uh, commissioned his own TV movie to be to be made out of the book, and it sucked. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, well, sometimes uh, Stephen King, you got to let directors cook 
because yeah. some directors are freaking amazing at their job. And sometimes you just don't need the underage orgy. I mean, you just, yeah, sometimes you just that's don't need not... it, Stephen King. <laughs> so I understand that when you have a whole development team behind it, they have their own visions and stuff, and they can make things better. As I've seen with at least uh, Hollywood movies and stuff like that, there are plenty of movies that make the the movies way better than the source material. Plenty. But yeah. I understand, you know, from a purist point of view, like the the haters of Chainsaw Man, right? Like, oh, I get, they added all these things. And I'm like, but Chainsaw Man was so good because of all the references. To movie. Again, Chainsaw Man felt like it was made for a Western audience than it, it was does. for a, a a Japanese audience because it all the movie works. references and stuff from Hollywood, like literally the opening sequence with kickback playing. It's like these are all <laughs> scenes from movies like the big Lebowski. Um, that's the only one I remember the fucking. Uh, <laughs> the Lebowski. Uh, there's a reference to Thor in there. Yeah, so it's I. So I can understand though. Oh, Reservoir you... Dogs. The thing at the beginning where they're all walking in the suits. That's a big yeah. reference to oh, Reservoir yeah, yeah, Dogs. Yeah. Great movie, by the way, if you've never seen it. Yeah. So I try to temper my expectations, but I'm dying over. I'm trying really hard not to cough. I'm dying over here because there's something stuck in the back of my throat. Oh God. Uh. Sorry, <laughs> but with watching shows that I don't know anything about, it's refreshing because one, I don't have any expectations I have to temper. Mm. I can just watch it. And that's a great, great. I, I like that. But it's so hard to find shows that I haven't already watched or have an interest in watching anything I don't already know that I've read that I want to watch because it's like. It's hard to find shows to watch if you don't know what it's about. Like yeah, I, I, you can read a synopsis, but that doesn't really mean anything, which is why we do episodes like this. So, you know, when for our in-depth portion and, or at least our um, rapid fire rounds, we give you a little bit more of a synopsis, like what it's going to be about. It's like, what you know, how we feel it's going to be. Yeah. And I, that's why I kind of like, this is what this, the preview started as really. Cause it's like, there's too much freaking anime to choose from to watch. Yeah, it's like because some people I, I've heard some people say, especially in some comments that they left on our YouTube channel, it's like, hey, you left out, you know, X, Y, Z. That was like the third or fourth most anticipated thing. And it's like, OK, that's great that it's that highly anticipated, but none of us really cared enough to talk about it. Yeah. And it's like I I'd rather especially with me, I like watching uh, shows that are like diamonds in the rough, like things that people do not expect to be good, because I find plenty of shows like that that are just amazing. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's right. let's get into it. All right, right yeah. hold on, hold on. I didn't. Huh. You did. Uh, damn, I didn't even get a chance no, to don't say. Oh no. no, no one cares how you feel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. I, I care. Go to, you can. I go was in. 2023 for you. I thought it was fantastic. Between Winland Saga season two, um, friggin' uh, we got more Megamine. More Megamine, Oshinoko, like this year, and uh, Mushoku Tensai. Fravren, I thought this year has been beyond Shangri-La fantastic. Shangri La like, Frontier is really good too. Yeah, I really th- uh, think like even though we're nearing the end of it, this year's been fun. It's Eminence been great for anime. Eminence, oh, yeah, Eminence oh my Shadow. god! Well, Not only did we got the first and the second season in this year in a single year. Oh, we got the, now, the award half show the is going to be season. fun. And we got the fir- second half of the first season and the entire second season all in one year. <sighs> Maybe I'll uh, actually participate in the award show this year. <laughs> you've, actually, you've watched a lot of the stuff that we'll probably end up nominating. Listen, you know the reason I don't ever show up on the award show is because I will debate you all to death about why you're wrong and why I'm right. I know. I know. <laughs> no, John, it's going to turn into John, John will Pitt. end up. No, John will end up showing up over there at the award show. Just to set us against each other, watch it burn and <laughs> thought, tackle just like that, just exactly fucking just like, like I did that. last year when I hopped into the meeting, just yeah. to cause chaos. Yeah. Um, what, what was supposed to be an hour meeting turned into like three or four. Yeah. Because this fucker, right? Fucker. And this is why I don't put myself in these situations. I know I'm bad for him. <laughs> no, I, I thought you were gonna say John was just gonna show up drunk to the recording and just be like, "Yeah, oh, you guys oh, are that'd be wrong. funny." That I'm gonna let y'all funny. finish, but I want you to know, <laughs> I want y'all to know, Shangri La Frontier is the greatest anime of all time. <laughs> yeah. Also, Freerun is like I think still the highest rated anime on Mal. The 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 uh, FMA Bros have not tried to dethrone it yet. <sighs> 
guess we'll see what happens there. Anyway, let's actually get into our uh, winter preview. Um, so I'll start. Um, and we'll go, as always, kind of round robin here. So the first one I want to talk about. Oh, by the way, let me go. Boop, and we are here. Um, the first one I want to talk about is Trigger's new anime, Dungeon Meshi. Uh, was so, anyone surprised when Trigger, Trigger announced this? <laughs> I am very surprised that Trigger decided to adapt this because I, I've i read Dungeon Meshi, the manga. Yeah. Uh, I'm up to date on it. So I know what it's about. And this is not Trigger's typical affairs of uh, John I have an extremely important question that I know is full on spoilers but it's oh boy. important to ask okay does it go to space <laughs> <laughs> it does not well, go to space you say it's not that. trigger then yeah exactly <laughs> John you say that but this adaptation could go to space oh you know yeah, what the yeah, adaptation could go good. to space but uh I think that the novel is the manga is really not the novel is a manga is really good. Mm. Like I personally really liked reading it. It starts off and it's just kind of like, oh yeah, it's just it, it, it's called Dungeon Meshi, a uh, dungeon food in the dungeon or something, right? Like, yeah, delicious in dungeon is the the English title. Eh, disgusting. Yeah, you, I you already know it's a terrible translation. Terrible. Translation. I already know when I'm watching uh, this. This is what I'm going to be eating food with because <laughs> yeah, otherwise probably. I'm yeah. going to be so way too hungry. It starts off with like a band of adventurers who are just like, like in the synopsis, it says like, let's eat the monsters, slimes, basilisks, even dragons. None are safe from the appetites of these dungeon crawling gourmands. That's literally the premise. That's it. Like, it just sounds like, <laughs> okay, let's go into this D&D style dungeon and instead of fighting everything, let's just kill it and eat it. No, no, you fight them. But then you also eat them. And then it's like, it's just like a cooking anime and it's like really good. But then out of fucking nowhere, there's a backstory that builds. Then that backstory becomes the main story. And then you're like, yo, what the hell is going on here? I can tell Whoa, he what wants the to spoil this. Like, this so was bad. supposed to be a cooking anime. What the hell? Yeah, like it starts off like that. And the first half, you're you're basically just like, oh, yeah, oh, monster of the week. What are we going to cook up today? And then it makes me think, yeah. If, if I was in a, a fantasy adventure, would I try to eat mushroom men? Like, definitely, I'd try to fucking eat mushroom men. I'd kill them and farm them. <laughs> <laughs> what if you got high off of them? Bro, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> then you kill a nigga. You yeah. set up a breeding facility. Uh, something so, I did want to something I did want to point out is that there isn't an episode count listed, but the start date is in January of 2024, end in June 2024. So it is airing for two consecutive cores. Oh, that's Ooh. pretty good then. Um, sure and it is going to be on Netflix. To, I'm not sure. Oh, see that that ruins it. I, Netflix. <laughs> you just no. killed John. I, see, right no, there. I think it's going to air week to week. At least I think it is. No, my problem with Netflix is that they don't know how to promote any of their fucking shows. Yeah, I mean, like this Pluto. is going to be a Pluto's fucking fantastic, and they didn't market it at all. Yeah, so that's one of my concerns, uh, the marketing aspect, because I know Dungeon Meshi is going to be pretty good. And it's unfortunate that Crunchyroll didn't pick it up because I think there are more people who have Crunchyroll than Netflix. For yeah, anime. Well, anime fans. Yeah, yeah, sure. anime fans yeah. for sure. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, uh, if you've watched this podcast for any more than a year, you know that I'm a fucking sugar slut. I will watch anything they make. Um, but yeah, this is not. This doesn't look like your typical tr trigger anime, from what I've heard from people who've read the manga. The story isn't your typical trigger story. So I'm interested to see what they do with this adaptation. I, trigger is not shy about doing adaptations these days, and I'm here for it. Yeah, they used uh, to be think... anime original onlys, and now they're not. Alex, let me ask this: the art style, the animation style of it—is it normal Trigger, or did they actually do something different? It's I didn't watch aspects, the movie. It's got aspects of Trigger animation and character design, but it's definitely different. It's okay. definitely based on the manga. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, okay. It's based on the manga's um, art style and stuff like that. I mean, from the trailer that I did see. Um, it does seem like they're going to have some of that that trigger like cartoon like character stretching and stuff comedy. Yeah. But I, it's definitely not. It doesn't look like anything else they've made. Now, the um, twenty four two core basically twenty three twenty four episode two core anime adaptation. Mm -hmm. The manga is finished, mm -hmm. so Ooh. they could do a full adaptation of the manga. I don't think you would be able to do that in 24 episodes. I know you could definitely do it in like 36, 
but not 24. It's a pretty short read. I don't think it's that long of a read. I wonder if this is one of those things where they're going to do like a 24, maybe even a 26 episode oh. um, adaptation for the series. And um, then oh, maybe Alex finish it off with a movie. Behind. Oh, I am? Yeah, yeah. you went kind of just like you me. just roboted and just like, mm. oh, well, I mean, the, que- the question <laughs> I asked were attacking you know, his internet again. Oh, God, Gators, <laughs> Gators. Uh, um, the question I asked was like, do you think it may be something where they do like a 26 episode adaptation and then finish it with a movie? Oh, they could I hope that. not. I hope not, though, because the ending is pretty nuts, like balls to the wall nuts. The ending is what I, I think like, OK, this is definitely a trigger anime then. <laughs> Because of all the crazy bullshit that happens, you're just like, yo, this is basically Trigger. <laughs> okay. All but right. I do know that uh, Dungeon Meshi is pretty well-liked among the uh, mangaka community as well. I forget mm. who who was reading, who was like, Dungeon Meshi is really good. He was like, his favorite manga at the moment was Dungeon Meshi. I forgot who it was, though. Was it, oh, no, it was Isayama, the creator of Attack on Titan, I think, saying it was his favorite thing he was reading. I think it was him. I don't remember which. Yeah, it's a pretty famous uh, mangaka who who also said like Dungeon Meshi is like his favorite thing to read right now. And, and I'm I just think like, it Yo. was um, Nisio Eason came out and said it's his favorite manga. <laughs> I honestly oh, I don't shit. remember. I just remember some high profile mangaka do also like it because they and I'm like I, I it's just it's unique, dude. I haven't read anything like this before. Like this premise I'm, I'm... of like let's eat monsters in the dungeon. And then, like, the backstory that happens with, like, the world and all this other crap. And it's just like, yo, what the heck's going on? Like, whoa. I, I'm I'm super looking forward to it, despite the fact that it is going to be on Netflix. That Maybe they'll do a weekly release. I hope they do for the sake of this show. Um, but I guess we'll see. I hope uh, word of mouth will uh, spread it. Because word of mouth yeah, me too. Al- almost always works in the end. All right, next is John with the most anticipated anime of the winter season, probably of 2024. Go. Let's fucking go! Peak anime is here, boys. You <laughs> thought Chainsaw Man was the greatest at it? No, sir. All right, solo leveling. Ore dake level up na- naka- naken. Is that what the hell the Japanese name is? Ore weird... dake level up naken. So the original title of this... um. Manhua, because it's Manhua. Korean. So the leveling is Korean, boys. So is this really an anime? Because it's made it based on a Korean uh comic? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I mean, it's being made by A1 Pictures, so yes. It is, and it's the A-team from A1 Pictures. The, it looks, the promo. I mean, I've if you look at the, if you look look at the trailer, you can tell it's the A-team. But uh, the original title is Alone I Level Up, I believe is what it translates to roughly. And that's why it's called Ore Dake Level Up Naken. But mm-hmm. solo leveling is the official better title name in my opinion and uh it's about a dude who levels up in dungeons by himself by himself Mm. (laughs) that's the whole thing that that's it i was about to say something funny about like there's a reference to why it's called solo leveling but then it's spoilers i'm not going to say anything if he's like a masturbation reference (laughs) if he's uh doing mostly solo leveling does how does he bounce off of other characters? Like, how does that work? That's like a, I doesn't. was gonna ask because if you watch this trailer, there's a significant amount of characters that are introduced for an anime called Solo Leveling. So there are a lot of side characters, but they're kind of irrelevant to the main plot line. Hmm. Um, they're kind of just because the guy it's called Solo Leveling because he goes around and fights. So basically, the premise is in the future, um dungeons magically appear around the world and when dungeons appeared uh all of a sudden humans could awaken superpowers right Mm -hmm. and this guy his dad disappears so when his dad disappears he has to like provide for his sick mom and his um younger sister so he goes and raids and dungeons and stuff but he's like super weak Mm -hmm. until then he's not (laughs) kind of yeah he's weak until he's not (laughs) well I don't know if what I'm going to say is going to be spoilers. You'll learn in the first episode, but you know, I'm not going to mention it, but basically okay. it's about dungeon diving and then like getting stronger and stuff. like so that. So it's oh. like Don Machi <laughs> a little bit. Not really though, because all right, you know what? I'll, I guess I'll just, there are no massive Keep it light. in this though. Come on. I don't, I, it's you'll learn this in like episode one or two. If you watch it, 
Like what I'm about to say next. I mean, I plan to watch this mostly because people won't shut the fuck up about this. Yeah. So solo leveling has been hyped up because the fan base is rabid, like extremely rabid about it. Yeah. Uh, I've been getting told to read it for years now. So, and now the writer is dead. I, Wait, what? yes. The creator of solo leveling, uh, has passed died away. last year. Oh, yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. So we're never going to get solo leveling to electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> there was in the at, epilogue. At least, there's, there's like plans for a solo leveling too. Basically, at, at least not really was, solo leveling though, but it, I'm doing whatever. At, at, at least this, I don't know what you call. What's the equivalent of a mangaka in Korea? Man, I, I don't know. Manwagaka. What I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> Manwagaka. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> At least this person got to finish what they were doing, unlike Mira. <laughs> yeah. So, this manga, mangaka, manhwa, here we go. Oh, wow. I, I read the novel. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be based on the manga or the novel. Uh, according to Annie Chart, it is based on the web novel. Okay. So, there are couple concerns i have with solo leveling coming out uh for one thing there's a certain arc that's very anti-japanese oh like they paint and vilify the japanese a lot because if you don't know korea and japan really don't like each other uh no bro you're, you're saying it wrong asia in general fucking hates japan yeah, because of something that happened like 80 years ago. This this might shock a lot of young people out there, but Japan were fucking war criminals back there in World War II. Yeah, they and they still have not admitted to any of their war crimes. Nothing happened at <laughs> Nanking. Just trust us, bro. So there is a very heavy anti-Japan uh, rhetoric in one of the arcs. Now, in the manga, because I read the manga as well, because it looks really good. Like, Korean manhwa look really good because, one, a lot of them are, um, well, not a lot of them. Most of them are full colored, which is, like, good. It's cool. It's like it's like reading a comic. And a lot of them really focus on having a good art style. Like, there's a couple manga that they don't care about the um, art style whatsoever. They care more about the story. But, the like, the line drawings are god-awful. Like, One Piece, for example, is a, a like, early One Piece. Like, I'm talking sub- Volume ten, it looks freaking Kashi. <laughs> yeah, Degashi Kashi, the manga hideous, right? K on the manga hideous. One, <laughs> can't one, fucking, yeah, he can't fucking draw. So, manga they care more about the story and characters than they do the actual lines. Uh, it is the opposite for a manhwa. They just have beautiful lines. They have beautiful coloring. They, they care more about that. That's higher quality in that sense. But I think there is a lot of story that um, it's not well as well developed as, mm -hmm. uh, as like certain manga. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a trade off, right? It looks pretty, but it's not that great. Anyway, point is, uh, in the anti Japanese rhetoric, uh, obviously in the web novel, it's the set. It's not censored because it's you know it's the web novel. It's the source. In the manga, when they did, or yeah, I'm gonna keep calling it a manga. <laughs> Fuck my run long time running joke of manhwa. But in the manga of solo leveling, they they do censor this certain uh, the rhetoric. They don't make it nearly as bad as it was in the novel. With the I wonder uh, if they'll handle it rhetoric. the same way that they handled the the thing about unions and the uh, chainsaw man thing in the, <laughs> the anime adaptation. They might. Where he's they... talking about how great union jobs are. <laughs> I think that. They definitely because for one, it's being animated in Japan. I don't know how Japanese animators would feel if they're told, hey, so this certain art, we're going to skew heavy into the anti-Japanese rhetoric that gets spewed here. It's like, oh, OK, like a job's a job, I guess. Like, I don't know how they'd feel about it, but uh, I'm pretty sure they, they won't uh, go into the super heavy anti-Japanese rhetoric. Yeah. And yay politics, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> politics, woo. politics in my anime. I safe to say, though, this is probably going to be the thing that people talk about the most in this yeah. season, yeah, without a doubt. And Especially if the if the anime adaptation is even halfway as good as people are hoping it is. Again, like with Chainsaw Man, I have to temper my expectations because, as we all know, shows that get adapted as well or are even better. 
anime than the source is very rare. So I, I just want to let everyone know, temper your expectations. Um, I guess one thing we shouldn't temper our expectations on is uh, the music because it's being done by our boy Hiroyuki Sawano. Dude, they're oh, going ball of the year. wall. Yeah, anime anime anime. Of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's it's there's a lot of action. There's plenty of action in this uh, anime, so it's gonna be pretty good. I think it'll be weird to listen to Japanese people uh, speak and voice uh, Korean people. <laughs> Because hmm. they have like Japanese, they have uh Korean names like uh, yeah, Jin Woo Sung. Yeah, these are very Korean names I'm seeing right here. <laughs> All right, well, I I will definitely check it out as I'm sure everybody else will. Next, we have Chinoda. Go for it, man. All right, folks, you ready for Harry Potter that beats the shit out of everyone? Season two. <laughs> I don't need a wand, I just need my fist. He literally just needs his fist. And his legs. Well, his whole body. He uses his whole body. It's beyond amazing. Magic he... is for pussies. <laughs> it really is with him. He's uh, literally just Rock Lee. Just magic and chakras <laughs> for pussies. <sighs> well, he's Rock Lee, but less idiotic, I would say. Just absent-minded. Um... Mashley season two. If you already watch it, you know what you're in for. If you haven't watched it, well, you need to watch season one first, first of all. Uh, the reason to go watch it, as I said, muscle Harry Potter, and that's the fucking anime, and it's hilarious. Yeah, what more remember, do you need? I remember when Mashal came out, and I believe you were the one who uh, covered it in the preview. Yeah, you did. And then you you were watching, you're like, holy shit, it's so good. And after, like, I think episode three came out, I was like, okay, I'm going to go watch Mashal. Because I was, like, bored, and I had nothing to do. And then I watched it, I was like, holy shit, that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's dumb. It's so fucking dumb, but I love it. Does it. So I haven't seen the first season. Does it actually lean into its absurdity? Yes. Yes, yes it, it does. does. And I probably it's great. Really enjoy it. If it doesn't take itself super seriously, and it just leans heavily into its own absurdity, I actually might enjoy it. Yeah, um, I I quite enjoyed it. Um, the I think the OP was really good. Like it's it's a, it's a very cool song. Uh, the the ED is I don't I don't really care for the ED song, but I think the dancing weird, is kind of cool. But it was fun, weird. I I thought the animation for the ED was cool, but yeah, uh, Mashal itself is just it's <laughs> it's it's punching Harry Potter. Like okay, what else? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what else do you it's need? It's funny. <laughs> it's got a lot of cream puffs. It's just funny as shit. Go this watch also it. Have a good time. Damn, they're going to be busy next yeah. season. Yeah, they're going to be extremely just busy. Like... <laughs> but what I'm really, really fucking hyped up for, and this is so stupid, I just learned about this uh, before we started recording. The OP for this season is done by Creepy Nuts. I fucking love Creepy Nuts, so I'm so fucking excited. I have no clue what it's going to be. Creepy Nuts is one of the best names ever for a band. Just like Bumper yeah. Chicken. <laughs> so, I it says that the manga, it's finished? I didn't know the manga was finished. Yeah, it must be. Huh. Let's see. Uh, fin oh, finished this year, back in July. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, okay. July 3rd. Okay. I might just pick up the manga then. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this anime. I'm going to go read the whole thing. Honestly, well, it's only 18 been out... volumes, 162 chapters. That's an easy read. Dude. That's a, yeah, you can read that over the course of like a day and a half. Easy. Yeah, I could do that in a day or two. Easy, easy, easy. But yeah, fun anime. Uh, good OP, good ED. I might it's... just check out the first season. Yeah, I'm check it out. Heaven. Honestly, yeah. you're going to have a fun time. You really <laughs> Maybe will. I'll do it while I'm on my Christmas vacation. Well, there you go. You'll have something to do. Yeah, <laughs> with all like the three or four other anime I need to finish for our award show stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, I so still have next. two shows from last season that I need to finish. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Same. <laughs> All right, so uh, next is me, and I'm going to be talking about gushing over magical girls. Now, listen, as much as I am a trigger slut, if you've been following this podcast for a while, you'll also know I'm a slut for Maho Shoujo's. Um, and that is exactly what this is. Um, I'm going to describe this for you as simply as I can. 
you know how in most Maho shoujos, there's like the main girl who wants to be a magical girl, and then some, you know, MacGuffin comes by and turns her into a magical girl? Right, yeah. Same, same thing happens here, right? Except she doesn't become a magical girl hero. She becomes the magical girl villain. Oh, let's go. Plot <laughs> twist. I'm here for it. And also, I was looks a little this. lewd from the cover art. Not gonna I wasn't lie. Ex- I wasn't expecting this when I watched the trailer, but this is lesbian as hell. Oh hell oh. yeah. Let's go. Let's go. I'm here. I'm here. This, the, 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 the main girl becomes a villain and then just kind of falls for it and then just teases and tortures the fuck out of these other Maho shojos. I'm here for it, man. You know, I felt like I saw every twist uh, on Maho Shoujo. Uh, I guess I haven't seen one where they they decide to just loot it up. I guess. And yeah, just just be a villain. Just, just why not? Why why not? Um, this is I I know nothing about the production company behind this. Um, oh, apparently they work oh. on uh, Slime Tensei. Okay. Um, oh, I read that. Um, what neighbor galaxy neighbor something whatever that oh, is. Oh, Niginga. Oh, this one here. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. That was actually really well done. I enjoyed it. Oh, okay, I thought it, was, uh, I thought it was okay. I, I I don't think it was well done. I I thought it was okay. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> pet oh, is no, not, not good. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I like this twist they've had on uh, the Maho Shoujo. I will definitely be watching. Um, it may be shit, but I don't care. It's Maho Shoujo. I will watch it. <laughs> that's my now, that's my threshold you, for Maho Shoujos. Do you remember a pseudo? I guess it wasn't Isekai, but it was like a magical girl Isekai called Dog Days. Do you remember an anime yes, like this? I okay. do. So. Back in the prehistoric age of 2010, <laughs> <laughs> there was a anime that I don't, I'm pretty sure it was like 2011 or 12 or something, but maybe it was 2010. I don't remember the exact year, but there was an anime called uh, Dog Days and it had like it was about it was like an isekai where this guy, he goes to a different world and there's like this princess girl, but she has like transformation scenes because mm. she's kind of like a magical girl and it's extremely lewd. Like it, this show was rated PG. It's for kids, but I'm watching it. And I'm just like, I feel bad that I'm watching this because to, it's to be fair. Sailor Moon was marketed towards a young audience and you can tell they're naked in their transformation scenes. I mean, that's not as that's not egregious, though, as Dog Days was. Dog Days was very egregious in some scenes where i'm just like the, like the, there's like a tentacle scene where she's transforming and i'm just like mm, bro i think this is made supposed to be made for kids but i don't know right now man huh. <laughs> maybe because i was a teenager arcs, and it aired for uh april 2nd 2011 to june 25th 2011 okay yeah. so yeah so you were right john 2011 yeah i was like it was it was in the 2010s somewhere in the 2010s yeah. early 2010s but i just that's the only time I've seen lewd, magical, like Maho Shoujo stuff mm-hmm. in anime form where I'm like, and they didn't intend to make it lewd. So for them to decide, you know what, we're going to make a, an etchy Maho Shoujo comedy. Like, like, okay, I, I thought I saw it all, but I guess Maho Shoujo I mean, is. Look, look at the, look at look at these tags, John. You've got Yuri. You've got uh, masochism. Bondage. I feel like you're ignoring the most <laughs> terrible thing here. Primarily what? teen cast. <laughs> John, that's the great thing about high school girls. Oh, oh no, get older, they stay the same age. All uh, right, all right, all right. <laughs> I hate it here. I don't know. This may end up being just schlock, but I will watch it simply because it's my shojo, and that's just the trashy guy I am. Hey, you guys have your John has his shitty isekai. I have my shitty maho shojos. <laughs> You say it like John's the only one that watches shitty isekai when I watch just as many. That's true, but you also watch Don Machi and, and enjoy it unironically. <laughs> oh, that is true. That's absolutely true. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got for this. Um, moving on to this. Uh, the Foolish Angel Dances with the Devil. Okay, so I read this manga. 
is really cute. Like the I, art style is really good. So I watched the trailer for this and I'm like, is this a rom-com or is this like, yes, it's a rom-com action or cause there's like action scenes in the trailer. It's, it's primarily a rom-com, but there is action. Uh, okay, basically John, what's the premise. Yeah. All right. The premise is that uh, the main character guy, he's a demon from hell mm -hmm. and he meets this girl who is a lowly Alex. I was, yeah, I saw that too. I wasn't going to bring it up, but I mean, that sold me instantaneously. Yeah, I bet it did. Uh, <laughs> Freak. <laughs> fucking freak uh but anyway he meets this lowly at school and um it turns out that she's actually an angel his like most hated enemy so they like fight each other but they also like they can't leave each other alone and it's just like you know it's like romeo and juliet you know falling for someone you're not supposed to fall for and that's the main the, the main premise and oh. i i think that the manga is it looks really good however I'm not entirely sure if the anime art style is going to live up to the manga expectations, which is unfortunate. Like, it looks okay, but I don't know. There's just something like I think any everyone out there, if you want to, if you care to go read the manga, go read like chapter 30 or something and look at the art style. Okay. It's very beautifully done. All right. I mean, the anime I... itself, the premise itself, like it's a, it's a rom-com and stuff like that. I don't think it's bad. I love rom-coms, so... Would you Who's say it's like a rom-com with a t like occasional action sequences? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, I believe it's Children's Playground Entertainment. Oh, yeah, okay. The studio that's doing it. Uh, they have. Oh, done... they did Far Away Paladin. Okay, they did. They haven't done a whole lot. They haven't been around for very long. No, Far Away Paladin is really good. So I'm actually yeah. interested now. That explains why it doesn't look as good as the manga, but. <laughs> I, 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 I can based on isn't finished uh no it's still ongoing but I, again it's a rom-com i think it's cute um like well, i know why you like this i i see i see why you like this right here <laughs> <laughs> yes Ray, could be, but she's like a supporting role it's not not she's not a main character role oh uh, oh let me ask this actually how are the uh supporting cast like are they interesting do they have anything to them no, they're kind of just auxiliary. The main characters oh. are the main characters and mainly primarily focuses on them. Okay. Unfortunate. I, I like rom coms where the actual side characters play a like a part. I don't know why. Yeah, same. I think no, that's why it, I like, it actually I makes I like it interesting. It makes it a whole world and instead of just like these two exist and that's it. Like it's like no, yeah, there's um, the entire cast. In, in typical rom com fashion, there's a lot of like will they won't they moments, so get ready for that. Oh boy. Let's string that out over like five seasons. That'll be and fine. Yes, and yes, Lily, our uh, female protagonist, she is a, a blonde haired Loli Sundere. Let's go. Oh, so, yes. It, it, it's so oh. stereo. It's so painfully stereotypically uh, anime rom com. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's cute. I think the story is cute. And I, again, I really love the art style, it looks really good in the manga. If anything, if you don't care for the anime, go go read the manga, guys. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so next is... Shinoda. Oh, wait. Real quick. How what? close is the manga to finishing? Um, I mean, I don't know if it's ever going to finish in our lifetimes, but... <laughs> oh, no. No, reason... don't say that, bro. Don't. The reason I say that is because the current arc... I feel like the current arc should be, like, the resolution arc, but as I've seen from multiple other manga before um thanks kubo tite the climax arc where everything was predicated on generally won't be the last arc and where it, it really should have been but it's not gonna be because they like money i like money <laughs> all right so next is uh chinoda with another season two let's go all right dangerous in my heart so i was watching this and I got so impatient that I ended up reading the manga. Oh my god, you pulled that is, John. Uh, that is <laughs> yeah, I pulled a fucking John. I do not do that often. <laughs> like it's very rare. But while I was watching, I'm like, I can't fucking wait for the next episode. I need to know. And I ended up reading like 70 chapters that first day I started <laughs> alone. I, I got hooked. It's. I was already hooked on the anime. I don't know why, 
Then I started reading the manga. I'm like, oh my god, I am into this. I don't, I don't know why. I still don't understand it fully. I'm just really into it. It's super cute. I find it wholesome as hell. The characters are interesting and fun. It's just a great time. It sounds good. Uh, beautifully animated as well. I will say the art style is really nice. The um, Shin main Lee character. Animated. Uh. Well, not the main character, the um, girl. <gasps> um, yeah. Um, Anna is, um, she is top tier waifu. She is great. She is such a gremlin and she is tall as fuck. I love her. So I remember you, you, you also did the preview for the, uh, the first, first season. season. Yeah. And you didn't sell, sell it to me then. You're not selling it to me now. Uh, I, to be completely honest, I hate this art style where it's like they have chibi like features and faces, but also like they're giant tits. Like, I hate this. This is a class of things I hate. John, I can't, I can't sell you on art style. You don't like, I hate that. Don't know what to tell. That's I mean, preference. Yeah. I can't sell you on that. I, I just think it doesn't look that great, but no, that's fine. To be that, fair, I, I can have a bad art great. style, but a good story. Yeah. As long as the story makes up for it, but the premise alone, I'm just like, that's kind of dumb. Um, but apparently I'm wrong because a lot of people do like it. So this is something that th the first season came out earlier this year, right? Um, I want to say it came out in remember. the spring. It came out. Let's see. I guess I didn't it come out at the right same here. time. Yeah. Ocean April 2nd, 2023. Yeah. So it came out in the spring. Yeah. It was, yeah. It aired okay. concurrently with Oshinoko. Yeah. Uh, I, re I remember because it was on high dive. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's one of those ones where I intended to check it out back then. I just never got around to it. So yeah, maybe I will now. I, I find um, it super cute. I am up to date on the manga. I genuinely so love it. It's I'm primarily super a rom-com, right? It's completely a rom-com. Okay. See, I like rom -com. Honestly, it's it's more it's more rom than com. You know what's funny? I prefer rom-coms that are made for girls than made for guys. <laughs> Guy rom coms just like I don't like because guy rom coms, rom coms are all about oh here's the loser getting together with the hot chick the popular girl it's extremely yeah. formulaic yeah but and from what I've seen oh man it's seen like the swoon trailers. dude like yeah, holy right. shit this dude is sweeping me off my feet right now <laughs> <laughs> from like, what yo, I... I want him as a husband though what right? yeah, exactly. if she get him <laughs> From what I've seen from the trailers of both the first and the second season of this, it just seems like both the main characters are kind of losers that gravitate toward each other. Nope, not at all. No, is that what, she oh. looks like a popular girl. What are you talking no, about? No, she is a popular girl. She's he actually <laughs> she's actually a model. Oh, oh like, Jesus. Is, yeah, okay. no, she is like... Wow, Remember, I take yeah, back like everything beauty. I said. Yeah, she's super pretty. Uh, he's actually really smart, but uh, very much a loner. This is so stereotypically made for dudes. I hate I it. I know, right? Yeah, it is. It very much is. But it's super cute. I I love it. I you really know, do. If I ever get through my endless backlog, maybe I'll I'll watch this, but <laughs> I wouldn't force it I on you, John. It. It's I like I know it's not made for people like you, so Yeah. But I love know, it though. Yeah, the, it, you're not the only one because it's pretty highly ranked. Like 19 yeah. most popular, like that's crazy. 16 most popular, it's crazy. Yeah. There's a reason. There is a good reason. All right. All I'll say. Next, it is my turn, and I'm going to be talking about Metallic Rouge. Is that a mecha I see? It is a mecha. So there is a mecha. Is that element. lesbians I see? It, it, it may very well be lesbians. Uh, so this is an anime original um, that's coming out in winter, um, being done by Bones, Studio Bones. Let's go. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let, let, I'm already kind of intrigued. Uh, based on what I've seen from the trailer and the um, the synopsis that I have read, uh, basically takes this takes place on Mars in you know pretty far in the future it seems like where you got humans and androids that, that live together and then you got your partner your like duo here which are detectives of a sort are one android and one human uh, and the story is kind of like blade runner-esque they're trying to hunt it's down hell of blade runner i read this i was like this is just blade runner murder artificial humans who are hostile to cover they go around killing terrorists yeah <laughs> pretty much terrorists. it's literally just blade runner with the hot chicks <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> oh god, um, I keep thinking I, about that Blade Runner song. Oh, it's so good. I love Blade, Blade Runner. So it's much. just good, man. I was talking to someone recently about that. It, maybe it was you, John, where we talked about like Blade Runner is like the ultimate guy movie. I don't know if it's the ultimate guy movie. It's a good movie though. It's a really I think the ultimate guy movie is Top Gun. I've never seen Top Gun, okay, but I know I know it to be good. Top Gun. <laughs> but yeah, this just seems like it's going to be um, essentially Blade Runner, just with mechs and potentially lesbians. I'm fine with that. It does, <laughs> yeah. it does, the text don't have any Yuri, but like. Just the position alone. Well, of how to be fair, sitting, you know? I don't see like, very yo. much information about this, but it is going to be streaming on Crunchyroll. So, yeah, because it's on Crunchyroll, it's easy for me to watch. So I might just pick it up. Also, the Especially tags are it's an anime original, you know? Yeah. And the tags are pretty much based on what you see in the trailer and the synopsis, because there is no source material by which to gauge it. How yeah, is but I'm the surprised trailer, that they Alex? Don't, they don't have any other like um, they don't have anyone else listed for the show, though. Like if you, if you scroll up, you you see like five people right director chief supervisor series composition no i'm talking but like for the the cast oh the cast you mean yes yeah like sure yeah. we say see the staff but like the characters we only have yeah two. we only have the two main characters i think they're the only two characters that are named in the trailer yeah so it's uh, i i wonder why it's so under wraps it's kind of weird i don't know but you know bones is doing it bones has been banging out some absolute awesome stuff recently especially now, I, got, I got a second question does that robot have tits is that glowing tits i see in the thumbnail it, it oh, may very course. well be glowing <laughs> titties oh, um, i think i'm not 100 sure i think the the lighter skinned one is the android and the dark skinned one is the human i think I feel like rouge is an android girl motion partner naomi i don't know maybe I, I, I don't want to make any assumptions. I just think the premise is interesting just because it seems to be taking inspiration a lot from Blade Runner, and I fucking love Blade Runner. Um, so I will definitely be giving this a shot. Also, since it's an anime original, we'll probably get a complete story, and that's nice. Again, it's on Crunchyroll. It's easy to access. I'll probably give it a watch. Oh, yeah. John, oh, they have a lot more of the characters and the voice actors listed on Mal. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, I'll have to go for Mal for one of the things I'm going to talk about later. But I just thought this is interesting. There's not a whole lot of anime original stuff airing in the winter. So I definitely wanted to talk about at least one. So this is the one I listen. Picked all you I had to say watch. was like Mecca. And I'm like, say less. I'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> say less. <laughs> just yeah. Like the freaking Kaiju. There's Kaiju in it. Say less. I'll watch it. OK, <laughs> maybe there's both. <laughs> yeah. Mecca anyway, Kaiju that, lesbians? Kaiju Mecca lesbians. Kaiju lesbians. There you go. All right. Next is John. Oh my god, this title. All right. <laughs> this shit. Oh god. <laughs> I no, say the title. Good... Say the whole title, John. Skoshi cheat ga saikyo sugete isekai no yatsura ga marure aite ni narunai. Is that an N? Just an N? Is it mm. Not in nine desk out. Um, my one shot kill skill is OP in another world or whatever the freaking I don't remember the English. The, title the English is. title is my instant death ability is so overpowered. No one in this other world stands a chance against me. Exclamation mark. Yeah. Uh. So it's an isekai. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, really? So this is a guilty pleasure of mine. Uh. Not just and because mine. it's an isekai, but. So the main character guy, he gets transported to another world with his classmates and everyone gets like certain skills and stuff like that. But he doesn't get a skill because he already has a skill and his skill is he can instantly kill people if they if he wants to like kill them, he'd be like, you're dead and they just die. They just done. <laughs> right. And anyone who focuses um, or tries to kill him or has any intention to harm him or hurt him, dies as well. Man, Stalin <laughs> they instantly so just, jealous? They just cease to exist. Stalin um, would have been so jealous. Yeah, if you have any hostile intent towards him, it doesn't matter if you if it's through a computer screen. It doesn't matter if you're 10,000 miles away on a different planet. You will die. That's so <laughs> stupid. What it is hell? so dumb. 
like quite literally there's like sages and stuff in this new world and one of them tries to kill the guy and it's just like they thought about killing him then it's like they just die (laughs) it's like oh (laughs) fuck Oh um, man, that shirt guy is sure to say dangerous. We should set up contingency plan. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's fucking dead. Um, I just like I like reading the manga. I haven't read the light novel yet, but it is based on a uh, light novel. And it says the source is the light novel, so I'm assuming that means that's what they're uh, adapting it from. So it's not a very serious series because obviously, like. My cheat skill is that I can instantly kill people, and I don't even actively kill them. They just kill themselves. <laughs> okay, what's the actual selling point here? Like, what 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 makes this fun? What's it's what's it's good? It's funny. It it pokes fun of isekai. That's why. Ah, okay. Okay. It, it's pretty satirical, but I think the interesting thing is that like he his skill and like his backstory of why he has this skill is actually pretty interesting because it's like, who is this kid who has this instant kill ability? And, it, and then you'll learn, like, later in, like, episode, in the next couple episodes, you'll learn, like, he's had this ability since he was on Earth. Not oh. just in the different world. He's had this. This is his own ability. What the so fuck? So it's like, yeah, so then you learn more about him and, like, where he comes from. It's, like, it's all a huge mystery. And it's just like, wait a second. Is he, like, the Grim Reaper or something? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, it's like humans discovered him in in the human world. They're like, holy shit, there's this kid that we found in this cave that's been locked away for like a thousand years and he can kill people by just thinking about it. So they're like, everyone's fucking deathly afraid of him (laughs) because they're like, this guy can literally kill anyone from any distance at any time. And they let him go to school. They just let him go. (laughs) Yeah, there's a whole backstory to it. So I think the interesting thing is that, but it does poke fun of a bunch of isekai stuff. Like there's a guy that he meets um i don't think it's his classmate but it's a different person so it's different people from different worlds that go into this one world right they take heroes quote unquote heroes from different worlds and dimensions and bring them to this one world to get a champion right of a hero that becomes like a sage it's like so it's like a battle here. royale kind of thing kind of so you'll it just basically you go into like different types of isekai trope stuff like there's the the demon lord versus the hero locked okay. in the miasma of time there's a guy who has a skill where his his op or his uh isekai skill is that he can gacha <laughs> <laughs> there's another guy who has like infinite uh he has like he always dies but he has infinite luck so he always gets revived by his goddess because the god feels bad for him because he has such bad luck <laughs> Hmm. so so it's very interesting in that aspect it, it, it's it's satirical it makes fun of isekai which is why i think it's funny Okay, okay, so it has fun with its premise. Yeah, I like it's that. not a serious manga, but the backstory of like where this kid, the main character guy with the one hit skill, like not even a one hit, just the instant death ability, that is interesting to me. All right, just because it's so much unknown about like who is this kid? <laughs> is he literally the uh, the god of death? Like who knows? No one knows. Okay, I was already planning on checking it out, but not, now I'm actually interested. Yeah, it's definitely right. just watch it. Turn your brain off. Oh, where's the airing? Oh, where is it? Airing? Oh, it now? is on High Dive. Ooh, oh, let's High go. Dive. And I actually, I, I haven't looked at the trailer yet. So it's by who's the studio? I can't read that on your screen. Uh, this. Oh my God, one room. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh, <laughs> we scroll down, no. scroll down, scroll down. We'll oh, see no. those. Okay. Let's see. Oh, they did Tomodachi. Oh no, I'm not. Thank God. Hmm. I've not seen studio. any of these anime. I don't think. Uh, I have seen. <laughs> was that the was the Isek- Isekai Mao Shokan? Uh, that's the the slave one. Dude Isek- gets summoned to a different world from his oh, video game. Oh, this is how not this. to summon a demon lord. Yeah, I this like is the this one, one where the black haired chick gets finger banged. She's not the only one who gets finger banged. <laughs> 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 God, one room fucking disgraced anime. I'm surprised it has even more uh, seasons of one room. Holy crap. Fucking you perverse. know exactly why. You know, we exactly. all know why. <laughs> it was Alex. me, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> it was me all along. The biggest detractor of one room, but also the biggest enjoyer of one room has always been Alex. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Speaking of detractor. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Shinoda. 
<laughs> wow, asshole. I didn't first of all, I didn't know the Blue Exorcist had even gotten a second season, much less a Yeah. <laughs> I, I made the exact same comment when I saw season three on his list. I was like, season three? When was there a season two? <laughs> well, I after so, season two. So for Blue Exorcist, I watched season one and then because season one ended, I really liked the uh the opening song from season one, which is uh In My World by Rookies is Punked. I really like that song. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I picked up the manga and then I dropped the manga because <laughs> <laughs> I I was caught up with it. I was keeping up with it. And just like one piece, eventually you just get tired of reading it. Cause it's like, nothing seems to be happening. Hmm. Like the story is just moving at such a slow pace. You're just like, fuck it. I don't want to want, I don't want to do this every week. And then eventually you just forget about it. So that's where I am with it. I, I noticed Whoa. in this third season, it's subtitle has Illuminati in it. Yeah. I was um, like, does Ren just turn into Alex Jones throughout this entire arc? It's I mean, called, what's up? Uh, Shim, uh, Shimane Illuminati saga. So I'm assuming they're going to get weird with the Illuminati. And I am looking forward to that. Um, Ren's it... going to turn the frogs gay. <laughs> oh, no. Don't say that. What? Oh, wow. The Why? manga is still releasing. Why? It's still going. All right. And... Is it they changed really? studios as well. It went from oh, A1 they? Pictures to Studio uh, Vuln. Studio Vuln. And they have okay. not done like anything. So I am actually. Oh, it gets really worse nervous. the further you go back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, Ushio Totoro. Did Ushio Totoro? Well, I really like Ushio Totoro, but the. I have no clue what good. that is. I've never even heard um, of it. Ushio and Tiger, I think, is the official name. Yeah, yeah. The guy's right. name yep. is Ushio, and the, the you know the, he has the power of a tiger, bro, a tiger demon. Bro, I literally never heard anyone even talk about this. So it was pretty popular when it was airing. Uh, yeah. in season one. But that was like, to hear that. 2015. Yeah. Oh well, I didn't hear. It's anything been a while. About it. Yeah. Um. So I'm quite worried as to how this is going to go. Season 2 wasn't that great either, so I'm really worried. I don't have too many high hopes. I hope they can now, uh, pull things around. I hope Studio Wom can uh, get its act together and uh, get something good out of this. Go I on, will John. say, the Kyoto Fujio Hen, the Kyoto Fujian Fujio arc was the boring <laughs> one. That's where I dropped it. So I okay. have no idea what uh, the Shimane Illuminati arc is going to be about i'm telling you gay frogs that's what it's about they're getting <laughs> freaky with the uh, the illuminati it's it'll be great i mean it's obviously making enough money or people are interested enough that it got a season three so there's that yeah, I, yeah. honestly i was genuinely surprised about that yeah blue exorcist i remember when that came out people were really hyped for season one uh, it was yeah. pretty well received but I haven't heard much about it. Like, obviously, I haven't because I didn't even know how to season two. But usually, uh, at least in Japan, like, there's a shit ton of promos and stuff. Like, I remember when uh, Blue Exorcist came out, there was a ton of promos for it in Japan, everywhere yeah. you went. <clears throat> so it's kind of interesting that it's at least selling well enough that it demanded a season three. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. It's and a shame that, that it seems like it's studio hopping now, but. I, I wouldn't necessarily good. say that studio hopping is a mark of death for a series. Not necessarily, no. I don't think it... it sometimes if it High School DxD has taught us anything, it definitely didn't kill a series because it's no. to three different studios. You, you know what? You're <laughs> absolutely right about that. I mean, it can work, but sometimes it doesn't instill a lot of confidence either. Yeah, yeah. it's worrying. All right. So shall we move on to our rapid fire segment now? Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, the first thing I want to talk about for our rapid fire segment, we're going to go to Mal real quick because this isn't on any chart. Um, so Shaft, Studio Shaft is uh, gracing us with more Monogatari in a way. Uh, so Kizu Monogatari Koyomi Vamp is a re-edit of the three Kizu Monogatari uh, movies into one big movie. Um, that they're putting back in theaters. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be taking stuff out, adding new scenes, uh, whatever. Uh, also don't know yet whether it's coming stateside. Um, I hope it does. Um, the really, the thing I wanted to ask about this, and I don't think there's necessarily an answer for it, is I wonder if Shaft is doing this 
to gauge whether there's still interest in monogatari anime because they want to adapt more of the light novels. So how long were the first three movies? Uh, the first movie was an hour long. The second movie was like an hour and 20 minutes. And the third movie was around the same length, maybe an hour and a half. So they're editing this for like a three hour long movie, like two and a half, three hour long movie. I would assume. Yeah. That's kind of a lot of movie. Yeah. And like Um, I said, I don't know if they're going to edit certain scenes out, whether they're going to put new stuff in. Um, I don't know. That's hmm. it. I just, my biggest question with this is, well, I have two. One, is this ever going to come stateside? And two, is this just Shaft putting like a feeler out there to see if people have a desire to see more Monogatari? I mean, I hope that's the thing because, and I hope it does well if that's the case, because I want to see them adapt the monster season and, and off season levels. What do you think is the chances of this succeeding? I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. It's been a while since we've gotten any Monogatari anime. So I, 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 I wish I knew. Okay. We'll see, I guess. Anyway, and this is, comes out in, in Japanese theaters the day before my birthday. Ooh. Uh, so next is John. Uh, <laughs> Hokkaido girls are super cute. Uh, what oh, else do Hokkaido. I need to say? Gals. Hokkaido? Yaru. Hokkaido, awesome, cool, love it. Super snowy, right? Gyarus, absolutely love them. Blonde Gyaru, right? Uh, the manga is itself it, is. Is it, safe, is it safe to say? I think all of us on this podcast like blonde women. <laughs> I don't. know Ty is obsessed with blondes. I listen. I don't. I don't. I can't explain to you why I like blondes. I just do. Okay. Uh, but uh, the I guess. it's based on a manga. Uh, the manga is it's it's a rom com. It's not. I don't think it's that etchy. It's more rom com than like anything else. And it's just about a guy. He transfers up to Hokkaido and he meets uh, this girl who's a gyaru. It's like oh, and Hokkaido, if no one knows, is known for having uh, very terrible winters. Very yes. cold up there in the winter. It's time. like the Minnesota of Japan. Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, actually, that ex- that describes it perfectly. Actually, yeah. Uh, Hokkaido isn't the snowiest place in Japan. That, I think that's Toyama. No, maybe? is it? I, I thought it was Aomori. It was. The is it Aomori? Place. I think is that's the, I think the one that's that the snowiest place in Japan. It's like 200 inches of snow a year or something. It's like something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah something ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Hokkaido is freaking cold. So basically, he he transfers there, and then he has to like go to school, and he sees a girl wearing a mini skirt going to school. And he's like, "Yo, what the hell?" <laughs> uh, but it's it's a rom com about a busty blonde. Well, blonde. She's a she's a gadu. She has. I don't hair. know. In this thumbnail, she's looking hella busty, man. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> she. Uh, I, I'm. Listen, I'm here for the gals. All right, I love gadus. I'm here for it. Same. <laughs> Same. Uh, I have no idea where it's streaming. I didn't uh, look at it. I it doesn't say oh. here. Yo ho ho. Pirates like oh, no. Me. Where is I feel it? like I feel like this will it's probably end up getting picked up by Crunchyroll at some point, either that or High Dive. I hope it's Crunchyroll. Like I said, it's easier for me to access stuff on Crunchyroll, and I dislike High Dives. Uh, like user user interface, a lot yeah. of things. <laughs> their their UI is so bad. It's yeah, so fucking garbage. It's not great. All right, uh, Chinoda. Yes. Um, Majo to Yaju, the Witch and the Beast. I'm actually really interested in this because it looks interesting and the premise is all right before just go back up so all i see is a blonde yankee girl with her hands in her pockets about to kick this vampire's ass i'm here for it yeah be the same. <laughs> i liked buffy the vampire slayer so <laughs> just giving off buffy's uh, vibes right here i mean uh... i'll just read the last sentence of the synopsis then They have scores to settle, and they won't hesitate to remove anyone in their way. That sounds hot to me. Wait, is this about a a fucking, uh, like, witch girl teaming up with a vampire and just kicking ass? Um, she's a feral girl with long fangs. Yeah, she's just feral, apparently. 
Well, she's, she's got the eyes of a beast, so I'm assuming that the, the synopsis says she got cursed by a witch, so I think she got cursed to be like a wolf girl or something. But oh, something like that. Yeah, she's freaky in the sheets. But yeah, and uh, this is done by um, what's it? Yokohama, Yokohama Animation, Animation Lab, Lab, and they've uh, uh they oh. haven't done too many things. They've done Lapis <gasps> Relight. Um, John, are you like? All right, what? all right. I'm sorry. So, Newgate and uh, Sugiyate and Usaga oh. are also uh, mangas that I've read that I like. So, I, oh. I'm excited for their anime adaptations too. Oh, so you got excited <laughs> to get an anime adaptation? <laughs> yeah, Just I didn't the realize they uh, had anime adaptations coming out later this year or later next year, I guess. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, but things I they have done that I've seen is um, the Genius Princess Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt. And the great cleric. I actually really enjoyed those anime, so I'm actually looking forward to uh, seeing what they do with this because it's an interesting premise. The PV actually looked uh, pretty cool. I like the art style of it and the animation style of it. The art style actually is very distinct and it it it's marketable. I will say so. I'm actually extremely interested to see how this goes. And it will be on Listen. Crunchyroll. It looks like. You had me at blonde high school girl fights with people. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. I, love I, I remember movies. Buffy. I remember Buffy. All right. I've never Buffy. watched Buffy. Oh, it's because you're a little baby. You're a tiny child. Um, all right. Next, uh, I want to talk about just briefly uh, the reboot of Oda Sayatsura is getting a second season. Uh, Bless David Productions. Not only do they give us JoJo's, they give us this uh first season was great it's i i think it's how a, a remake uh should be done um i'm i'm super looking forward to the second season um I, that's pretty much all i got to say about it it's all the same people coming back to do it say it's still david production um yeah that's, that's it that's all i got <laughs> Uh, if you like, if you if if you're old as fuck like me, and you like the Rusei Yatsura back in the day, watch the remake if you have it, because David Production is doing a great job with it. Um, Would you also, say it's go as ahead. good or better than the original? I mean, the story like they have changed almost nothing about the writing, so the humor is straight out of the seventies and eighties. Um, oh. It's just an updated animation, which looks gorgeous. By the way, I mean it's David Production, so of course it looks gorgeous. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I would say if you have to pick one, pick this one because the animation is just so much better. Okay. Um, because the writing is pretty much exactly the same. One thing I I I think is great is David Production actually brought, uh, I think two of the original voice actors back from the old anime and oh, made them cool. the made them the parents of two of the characters, like the main characters. The fact that they're alive is cool. <laughs> And one of them was retired, and they came out of retirement to do the role. Holy oh. shit, that's amazing. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. I will definitely be watching, um, even though uh, it is on as it is going to be on high dive. Uh, all right, next is John. Uh, Tales of Wedding Rings. I read this manga. I vaguely remember it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen. She, he wants to marry this chick that he loves, and he had, it's apparently a reverse isekai where she came to his world, and then he follows her back to their world, and then there's like seven chicks, I believe. It's a harem anime. Oh, lovely. Oh, damn. Elf. I see elf. Yes. <laughs> there's a dragon girl, the elf girl, the magic girl. Oh, you said dragon girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, he perked up, didn't he? Monster girl, freaking Nekomimi. It's it. It's harem, harem rom rom com, kind of actiony, I guess. It's not really. Shinoda just really wants to stick his dick inside of Dragon so bad. There's a reason I love playing Bard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe the Dragon Girl is the lowly in the harem, so there's... even better. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing else I can say about it other than like I remember reading this way back when, and it's just about it's called Tales of Wedding Rings because he's he he goes around and he gets married and he gets wedding rings and. It gives him powers. That's it. That's okay. all. He, he, That's he gets married and has multiple. Is he a Mormon? No. <laughs> Mormonism, the anime. Yes. The anime of the Latter Day Saints. Yes. 
No, this right. actually does look a little bit interesting, and uh, characters look kind of cool. And the, I like the character design. I looked at this, and I was like, oh, this actually doesn't look bad. I saw Elf, and I'm kind of sold. Listen, I was very attracted to the character designs of the uh, women on in the cast in the manga, so <laughs> that's why I originally started reading it. Um, Rule34.com <laughs> All I can say is I can't wait for the next Comiket when I see a bunch more doujins for this come out. <laughs> <laughs> now we know why he wants this anime to come out. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a it's proven the thing. Truth. When it the animes the come out, it... Uh, when an yeah. anime comes out, there's a lot more hype and build up around it, so you get a lot more doujins about them, okay? <laughs> That's true. All right. Uh, next, Shinoda. All right. Haiku. Haikyuu, we're back here again. Let's go. Didn't uh, this end already? What's happening? <laughs> no, it's still Does going. that boy have a dagger? Why do they have daggers? Are, is this <laughs> they a, both have daggers. <laughs> don't you know you bring a knife to a volleyball fight, John? Yeah, what John, don't you here? know anything? I don't understand. Don't you know anything about volleyball? <laughs> he obviously not, dude. Um, Haikyuu, the movie uh, Battle of the Garbage Dump, this is the... This is the sequel to the uh, last season, so it's keeping uh, it's moving the story forward with the um, movie. I don't know if it's the last piece of it. I haven't read anything about this whatsoever. So I'm it says going here it's in the complete first surprise. film of Haikyuu Final, so I think it's going to be split into two movies. Oh, okay. That yeah, that seems about right because uh, what they don't do like one episode things for their arcs um or their um volleyball matches it's always like a whole season for a single match and it doesn't surprise me whatsoever uh, the fact that they're doing it movie style for the uh if it if this is the actual final part of it because they put effort love everything possible into their uh animations and if this is the final, it's going to look and sound beyond amazing. I am so freaking hyped. The fangirl in me is the, squealing. Um, I just feel like making it into a movie format probably just profits them more money. It might. Oh, it absolutely will. Like, it as might. I seem to recall, Haikyuu does really well at the box office in Japan. Yeah. I mean, the series did well, too. I mean, everyone... Listen, women like volleyball boys i guess they there's a there's a lot of game it's, it's, it's very <laughs> gay doujinshi for him it's so gay it's so fucking gay and that's part of the reason why it's so popular it's not just popular in japan bro <laughs> yeah, yeah i know popular. that's what i'm saying like back in, was told... it, 2017 when we we're at anime expo i think that one of the most seen cosplays was Haikyuu, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I also there there's a um uh convention that happens here uh in Central Florida in Orlando called MegaCon. And one year they were doing MegaCon. And MegaCon's like a pop culture convention. It's not just an anime convention, but there's a lot of anime stuff there. And it was going on at the same time a big volleyball tournament was taking place in the same convention center. Oh. So a lot of the people that were cost, and this is when ha Haikyuu was like super popular. So there was a ton of Haikyuu cosplayers. They all went and watched the volleyball tournament That's in their great, cosplay. And then they realized volleyball wasn't as cool as Haikyuu made it out to be. It wasn't as gay as Haikyuu made it out to be. <laughs> it is extremely fast though, and that's uh yeah. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, they were like that. The whole place was just full of people in high cosplay watching an actual volleyball tournament. That's actually pretty cool. I wonder if this. I, I'm assuming this will come stateside eventually. Eventually, I have no idea when it is though. I I have not seen a single announcement. I've seen basically no advertising for this, and um, give it time. Give it time. I know it'll eventually air. I just don't know when. All right. Uh, next for me, uh, Isura, um, let me ask you something, John, because mm -hmm. you're, you, you're versed in isekai, uh, tropes. Yep. This has a demon king in it. Demon yep. kings died. Now there's yep. a giant power vacuum. Yeah. Well, now we obviously have to have a battle royale to figure out who's going to be the new demon king. 
that's this entire anime. <laughs> The entire this Ishura is an entire anime based on the idea of Demon King dies. Now there's a power vacuum to f- find out who's going to be like the ruler of this this world, which I don't think is an actual Isekai. I, I could be wrong. Um, I see three CG. Me. In oh yeah, thumbnail. Isekai tag. Never mind. Never mind. You had me until Battle Royale, and I started snoring. I mean, that's that's this whole thing. I I will not be watching. <laughs> I mean, I, I like generic. I like battle manga. Don't get me wrong. I like to watch people fight, um, like Kanga Nashra. You know, um, there's the new one that I was watching. I forget what it's called. It's basically like Japanese um, mythos, legendary people duking it out in a battle royale for Oda Nobunaga as a as it's a manga always, series. It's always Oda Nobunaga. It's always fucking him. Yeah, basically, once he un- unites Japan, he's like, I want to hold a tournament to determine Japan's finest warrior. So then people from history fight each other and kill each other. And then that that's the manga. It's a battle manga, battle tournament manga. And I'm just like, I like this. I don't care. It's like watching um Ragnarok, uh, Record of Ragnarok. Same mm. same concept where you just watch like people fight. It's just a battle tournament the entire time. I just feel like if Oda Nobunaga could come to like present day and see how he's portrayed in Japanese media, he'd probably just look at him like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? I just, I don't know. Apparently, it was a very sentimental man, man. <laughs> I could probably All say right. the same thing about like George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. Oh, Although Abraham Lincoln August really fought now. vampires, that is a true historical fact. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, right. Oh lord, not this shit again, <laughs> dude. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer is a great movie. I don't know what you're talking it's about. It's a great movie. <laughs> Anyway, I just I thought this is kind of like super generic looking and it's like, eh, why? Anyway, that's all I got for it. Next, John. Uh, Speaking of best, long titles. <laughs> best tank skill level 99. I don't care about the English title. I remember reading the manga for this a while back and being like, I, I find the premise interesting. Uh, basically, there's this guy. He has to take care of his sick uh, younger sister. So he joins the hero's party. But then the hero party kicks him out because they're like, you're fucking useless. Get out of here, Rude. Or Rud, I guess this is his name. And um, his special skill is that his tanking ability is at level 999. Like, his, his defense ability is 9999. Like, he's maxed out on defense. And uh, because he's maxed out on defense, he can't deal any damage because of that. But because he has maxed out defense, he was like, the, he's a linchpin for a party. So it's like mm-hmm. the main tanker is now the uh, the main character. And I think that's an interesting premise because usually in shows like fantasy shows like this, it's like, oh, I discovered some unknown ability that makes me level up five times faster than everyone else. Or um, I have this OP skill or whatever. Right. Just some generic bullshit. Yeah. Just, just some generic bullshit power scale. And this one, it's like, well, no, he's not powerful at all. The only ability he has is that he cannot he can tank. That's about it. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Okay, uh, next is oh, it's me because Chinoda is out of stuff to talk about. Um, uh, this is the Demon Prince of Momochi House. Um, basic premise of this: uh, orphan girl gets it, like inherits her family's like estate. Unfortunately, there's people that are already there squatting because it turns out, oh no, this is like a portal to a demon world that's in your house, girl. Bad luck. I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> and, this is clearly uh, a reverse harem made for women with the dumbest premises ever. I mean, are they hot though? Probably. One of them. Okay, that works. In, one of them turns, at least in the trailer, turns into like a uh, Bishonen uh, cat boy. I'm fucking here for it. Oh, let's go. I'll be, yeah, yeah. All let's right, go. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, it, it seems like it's it's definitely more geared toward women because it's it's basically a reverse harem. Um, I don't know. I might check this out, but eh. It is being made by Studio Drive, who is now in charge of Konosuba. So, anyway, uh, John. Oh God, what was the uh, Fluffy Paradise? Is Fluffy Paradise? This looks so fucking cute. I read this manga. I've not read the light novel, but I read the manga. The manga absolutely fucking adorable. Love the art style. 
They make every they make the main character girl look so fucking cute. They make all the animals look super fucking cute. Look at that trailer. Look at that girl. Look at that face. Look at her. Freaking precious. I mean, anyway. Look um, at that. There you go. Yeah. Nefertima. So the premise is an office lady uh, overworks herself and dies. And as she's dying, she's like, oh, in the next life, I wish I could be surrounded by fluffiness because I love animals. So God's like, bet. So he reincarnates her as a, um, I believe she's the daughter of a duke. Hmm. Uh, she's basically like royalty or some shit, right? High, high, uh, a noble woman. And she's a little girl. And she, her special ability is that she can talk to animals and all animals love her. And that's it. She, she's surrounded by cute animals. That's it. That's that's the premise. That's it. That's all. That's so the entire show is just like cuteness overload, and that's it. Yes, it's just cuteness overload, and I I'm here for it. It's so fucking adorable. John, okay. am I gonna need uh insulin shots? I don't think it's cute in insulin shot ways, like uh sweetness and lightning in uh Poco Zudan world, but it's just in general super fucking cute. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's just like ah, like ah, look Aww. at these cute things. Ah. All right. Cool. So it might be your like wind down kind of show oh yeah i'm, I'm, I'm gonna be excited i, to I watch love every having episode. one of those yeah i love All having right. one of those every season uh next which i believe is also last for me uh is sengoku yoko um this entire thing based on the synopsis and the trailer i watched just seems to be like a giant allegory for racism uh, yeah i love that uh basically world divided into two factions you got your humans and your monster boys and girls um and then there's a, a faction that wants to just enslave humans and some people on the monsters like no slavery is bad <laughs> racism is bad <laughs> and they just uh go out and try and uh destroy this plot it's just like a let's go out and have an adventure while we're bringing down the government i guess seems generic i mean <laughs> isn't that kind of the plot to uh um, final fantasy 7 no no it no, was no no not the plot of final, they were trying to no, bring, no, no, bring the plot a of final, not a no, no. government the plot of final fantasy 7 is that a group of eco-terrorists break into this manufacturing plant to destroy it because eco-terrorism yeah that it was more of a like of corporate fantasy entity that they were fighting not a government uh, which well, is they sometimes difficult to distinguish. So kind of like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, uh, I guess one fact to mention is the uh, music in this is being done by our boy Evan Call. So the Ooh. music in it will probably be you know really, I really might, good. I might watch it then, just because Evan. Yeah, is just because of music. that. Yeah, just because of that. Just like if also, Kevin ever does music, I'm like, I'll, I'll watch your anime. Bro. Also, like look you. at this smug child. <laughs> yeah, that's like I, I'm assuming that's her untransformed face. I guess. And I'm assuming the other one is like her, like the battle form is when she transforms. I'm, I'm assuming that's what that is. I kind of assuming so as well. I guess, I guess we'll see. I might check this out just because it's being, the music is being done by Evan call and he's been on an absolute roll recently with the music he's been writing. Yeah. Um, also, this is being done by studio white Fox, uh, the studio behind uh, re zero. Okay. I'm actually excited for that. Yeah. In between their like eight year gaps of ReZero seasons, Love I'm not it. excited for it because I don't care about uh, ReZero or White Fox in general. Like it, 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 the studio behind stuff doesn't really affect if I want to watch something. Okay, uh, I just can. I know I can expect quality from White Fox for sure. At least animation I guess, wise. <laughs> I guess the only thing I'm concerned about is if I see something that says Studio Dean, then I then I get worried. <laughs> <laughs> with with good reason with very good reason <laughs> like the studio dean is like oh oh no oh no oh no all right well that's that's really it that's on our list to uh talk about uh, uh for, for those of you who will point it out yes we well, didn't talk about like three or four of the things right. that are on the top of this list um classroom of the elite season three is coming out which is it's crazy because we waited 10 years for season two between season one and two but season Just two like Blue exorcist Season two, when it came out, it was, uh, I thought it was pretty well received. I had to rewatch season one to re watch season two before it came out because, you know, 10 years, it's a huge gap. Uh, I'm pretty excited for season three because in season two, it ends off with like, it finally shows like the main characters, like potential. Like they, it's like they, they tease like his, he's like, okay, he's ultra smart. He was raised in this facility, but like he just wants to live a normal life. And he's like, oh, I don't want to really show off. 
But in season two, like his hand gets forced where he actually has to like use 10% of his abilities. <laughs> right. So, yep. and then it's like, yo, this dude's fucking crazy. Like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> so I, I, it ends off on a pretty like, yo, no, you know? So with season three coming out and like, now we know more about him and a little bit of, about his background. And like, there's another character we find out that knows his background too. And it's like, yo, okay. So it's getting more interesting. Okay. Um, Suki Michi, uh, Moonlit Fantasy season two is coming out. I didn't, I read this, um, the manga at least. I don't read the light novel. I did not watch the first season, but apparently people really liked it. It's pretty popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, I should probably go watch the first season, and uh, you know, like that's coming out. So look forward to that for fans of uh, Sukimichi Moonlit Fantasy. John, let me ask this: Isekai, yes, you... yes, <laughs> not even that. He knows. Like, that's just he a knows. given. OPMC, uh, yes. <laughs> is uh, yes, there's a dragon. Yes, the like dragon that. wants to fuck him. <laughs> Can I can I ask my question now? Was that yes. not the answers that you wanted? No, none of them. <laughs> but did they pique your interest in wanting to watch <laughs> Moonlit Fantasy? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. Look. Um, ask your question. Ask your question. <laughs> do you understand why people are interested, uh, so interested in season one, or why it was so popular? Like, does it make sense? I mean, I, I haven't seen season one, so I, I don't know. No, no, but... I'm saying based off the fact that you read the manga. Oh, based off the fact that I read the manga, I would say so. It's pretty interesting. It's about a guy okay. who gets reincarnated into a different world. And the goddess goes like, you're too fucking ugly. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so she kicks him out, right? And throws him into the monster lands because she thinks he's as ugly as a monster. And only and she's like the human goddess. And she only believes that truly beautiful people can be humans. Oh, yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Damn. it's about like it's kind of like a not really a revenge story, but it's about like a discarded hero, and he basically helps like the monsters and stuff like that. It's I think it's a pretty. I cool actually story. really like those stories. So yeah, yeah. Um, and then I wanted to talk about Yubisaki to Renan a little bit because we uh, we were looking one? at this and none of us wanted to uh, put it on, but uh, I'm pretty interested in this. It's a it's a shoujo rom com, but the main character is Death. So I think mm. that's um, and I, I watched the trailer for it. I'm like, it looks pretty cute. I'm probably going to watch it cuz just cuz it's a shoujo rom-com but uh you know be on the lookout for this. Okay. I've never heard, what's the studio? I've never heard of it. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Oh, the bookworm whatever thingy. Oh, Ascendance of a Bookworm? Yes. Oh god, they did the first season of uh How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. <laughs> Okay. So oh my actually... God! They did Izetta. Oh my fucking God! <laughs> I mean, again, Agiato, like whatever. Uh, and then there is a season two of another show that I didn't watch the first season of, but I read the manga of. Uh, that one, yes, yes. Another long ass uh, title. I'm sensing a pattern, John. <laughs> um, basically, the first season is, or the premise of this story is that uh, I was kicked out of the uh, hero's party, so I decided to live a solo life. That's like okay. the... Yeah, banished CLDR. from the hero's party, I decided to live a quiet life in the countryside. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not isekai for once. It is fantasy. But basically, the guy gets kicked out of the hero's party. So he's like, okay, bet. I'm gonna just going to go retire in the countryside. And that's it. He goes and retires in the countryside. <laughs> it's, that, that's, that's the story, bro. Okay. <laughs> Is. Yeah. Oh, I watched this. Holy shit! I didn't realize this was. Oh, I'm actually really excited for this. I didn't even realize season you know, two saw was a long out. title. And he's like, I can't get through this title. Yeah, season two is coming out. Uh, I've seen a lot of ads for this coming out. Like, I believe it's published or produced by Katakawa. Yeah, it's produced by Katakawa. Yeah, they've been really pushing it. So I, I'm assuming it did really okay, well. In no, sales. I can actually talk about this uh, a little bit. Um, okay. I actually did watch season one. In, um surprisingly it turned out to be actually really good really entertaining i genuinely enjoyed it um characters actually felt good and it was it turned out to be really wholesome in uh several parts so i'm actually really excited i did not realize season two was coming wow yeah i i read the manga i i don't mind it i don't think it's egregious like it's not it's not like an OP guy retires to the countryside and continues to be OP. It's just like, nope, he wasn't that OP. He was just kind of a guy that was in the party. Uh, he was an his... OP, but he was necessary. 
Well, like, because his skill is not necessary, and his the, the hero is actually his younger sister. Yep. And through some, like, fuckery bullshit, he gets kicked out of the party. But he's just like, okay, bet. I'm just going to go retire in the countryside. I'm like, cool. I'll show and you I, I just all. love And the reason you know why I like it so much is because he's living his best life. And that's, like, the sweetest form of revenge to me. Yeah, they say the, the guy best revenge is living well. Yeah, he's living. It, it, this, is, this encapsulates it. So I, I really like the story from that point of view. Like, he straight up gets a waifu, gets land, and, like, he's yeah. just. <laughs> Bro, he's just. He's living, living his best life. <laughs> It's, that's it okay sweet wow um, anything else you want to talk it. about on this list before we wrap it up uh yeah so there's another one right there in the center chiyu mahono <laughs> machigata um speaking of healers in anime <laughs> uh this is the we, we talked we about go how, again boys <laughs> was it in the wtf or like interesting concept like redo of healer right we were talking yeah, about where how it's a evil having a healer, healer. Okay, so uh, this is another healer anime, Isekai. Basically, a guy reincarnates into this world uh, or gets teleported to this world, and he has an aptitude for healing magic. But okay. the way that he uses healing magic isn't to be like an OP healer. He uses it to like strengthen his body to beat the fuck out of people. <laughs> 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 so because his... So in this world, everyone He's here values... To pump you up! up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... It's funny because in this world, everyone values attack magic because like, oh, attack magic, you can wipe out like 10,000 enemies at the same time. Mm. But everyone's afraid of the healer squad because they're a bunch of fucking freaks. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. So what the reason kind of freaks are we talking? Jesus. Like people who only use healing magic, but they can run hella fast and pull people out of the battlefield. They can fight for days on end. <laughs> they're fucking oh. monsters. Like, that's his teacher right there who's about to smash him with a fucking rock. Let's go. <laughs> and so it's an I'm always so afraid like, to play these trailers, even without audio, because God knows they're going to strike us down. Yeah, you don't have to play it. But Anime I think it's studios an will strike us down. I think it's an interesting premise of, like, he's OP, sure, but, like, he uses healing magic the wrong way. Like, it's the wrong way to use healing magic is, the, like, the English title, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it, the wrong way to funny. use healing magic. Yeah, he just uses healing magic to punch shit. <laughs> that, that, that's that's it. That's the story. Oh, wait, is he like? Uh, is he like? Um, is it? What's the boulder puncher in Resident Evil? Chris. Chris. Yes. Is he like Chris from Resident Evil? He's just like I'm gonna punch this boulder to death. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it's just funny. Everyone fears the healer squad because they're just a bunch of freaks. <laughs> because <laughs> okay. they use healing magic to continually work like zombies <laughs> fair <laughs> enough i guess it's also worth pointing out um some stuff that's left over that's going to be airing into the winter free run which i think we're all absolutely Ooh. adoring Ooh. free run um, we Ooh, also Shanker have uh, shangri la frontier <laughs> uh, ragnar crimson whatever i mean undead unluck i haven't started that yet but some people say it's pretty good fucking people said it, it. It's, it's rough in the beginning but um it i does find it, it stride I'm watching it. I fucking love it. Beyblade! <laughs> Yo, Beyblade. Let's Let go. it rip. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be it. I think uh, I think this is a good spot to uh, to end it on. So that's going to be our preview of uh, Winter 2024. Let us know down below the stuff that you are uh, looking forward to, uh, especially if it's something we didn't get a chance to uh, cover. Um, and thank you, everyone, for dropping by uh, to watch us talk about it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below if you like what you saw here and want to see more. Uh, it really does help us out. You can also check down below where you can find links to Anime Club After Dark on uh, Twitter, on TikTok. Uh, we have a Discord server you can join down below there where you can always keep up with what we're doing. Um, we also have a merch store link down below where you can buy uh, cool stuff. I don't have really anything nearby to show off right now. Uh, all what the mugs are... The plugs, Alex? What happened? All, you used to be the... so well prepared. All of my all of my shirts are in the dirty clothes and the mugs are in the dishwasher. But I have our fin book right here. <laughs> Yay, fin book. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a, a bunch of merch in our merch store. You can buy if you really want to help us out that way uh, and have some cool merch for yourself. Uh, but with all that, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Bye. Oh my God, I am ready my to sleep. Here. I know, right? You got like <laughs> a bed here. cowlick balooza going on back there. Don't worry about it. 
He's becoming the rooster guy in Shangri-La Frontier before our very <laughs> eyes. You know, I learned something about um, like why some characters have that little like cowlick up here. Uh huh. It's probably to it's to represent that someone's a fucking airhead or an idiot. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I know Ahoge. about this. Yeah. Ahoge is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, that's what it's no. called. Uh, yeah, it's Ahoge, uh, uh, idiot hair. Yeah. So yeah. I, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that. Maybe man. With with Koyomi is in Monogatari, he must be really stupid. 